Y hasta las putas pelotas. No me digas, tío. Estoy en fase 2. Día entrado en fase 2. Fase 2, te pones. Pues sabéis que. Tenemos que ya estamos pintados y está teniendo problemas. Hello everyone. This is the first episode ever in Formosa Bros English. Woo! Welcome, Maurice. <laughs> Very excited. Yeah. Uh, I need to introduce a lot of things in this episode. First of all, I'm the host of the Spanish version of the channel called Formosa Bros. It's right. the original channel. And I decided to open the English version as well. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> well, we got 1,000 subscribers in a nice. few months in the other one, so we're very excited. And I just want to use this energy to keep uh, introducing things about Taiwan. Right. Culture, politics, news. Also, things about uh, fighting the information war from China. Mm, you know, all Very important stuff. Things. So give a voice to Taiwan, basically. That was the aim of the Spanish channel and the same thing we want to do with the English channel. Okay. I want to introduce my guest today, Maurice. Very interesting guest. Is a host, in fact, from many uh, TV shows, right? Yes, and exclusively, as, as of right now, um, all these shows are on Taiwan Plus. So I actually work full time for Taiwan Plus. We basically make shows to share stories and different perspectives from Taiwan. Yeah, very promising channel. It's a growing channel, yes. public channel from Taiwan, right? Yes. So I'll put the link in the description. A very interesting documentaries and things about Taiwan. Yes, definitely. We're in the same page because we're both trying to contribute to give a voice to Taiwan. Normally, a lot of this information comes from China. All those YouTubers, the Lao Wais that goes to to China and they just sell their souls to the CCP and they speak shit about Taiwan. <laughs> and I think there are a lot of people talking about Taiwan, but you know, we In just need more, way. right? Or or maybe we just need more perspectives. Yeah, yeah. Maurice, you're a very interesting uh, um, history because you went to the U.S. to study. Yes, I and did. Later, you go to Jinmen, the closest place to China. In Taiwan to do your military service. Yeah, and it was by luck. That's like quite I, impressive. I, I drew a lottery and it oh, told really? me to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's how you do it. You can go to any place in Taiwan. Well, in my cohort, like you could go to Jingmen and then Kaohsiung and then Taoyuan. So these were the three places where you draw the lottery where out you and then you're like the most dangerous place on earth. And there was like what <laughs> six? I had I had the chance of like a hundred out. Out of a hundred lottery tickets, there were only six that were oh, to Jingmen, and I got—I really? was the first one to draw them. <laughs> so I had the, the the smallest chance, but I still got it. So, so you know. for people who don't know how close this is to China, you can actually <laughs> see the face oh, of a Chinese yeah. on the other coast. Yeah. Right? I think the closest distance is like five to seven kilometers away from China. I'm putting images here as we speak. You can see how crazy close it is. How? Yeah. When you look at the map, you, you, I feel, how is it possible that that place was not taken by the Chinese in the first I, to, place? You it's know, just right there. You go to all these historic sites in Jingmen and you keep asking yourself the same question. Like, they, <laughs> what they, the fuck am I doing? Yeah, like place? they talk about all these battles, all these <laughs> history, and you're like, how did the people <laughs> secure this place? Like, yeah. what? <laughs> so how they actually secure it? Because it can take it. Sometimes they launch rockets or bombs, I heard. Right, right. right? They, right. They, they throw things. Uh, not, I don't think as, not today to Jingmen, but they definitely, yeah, I mean, we there is a constant Chinese threat for sure. But um, you just actually see it. You see yeah, the, yeah, yeah. you wave each other or something? Uh, no. Well, so there's this place on, on Jingmen Island where you can kind of, through binoculars, see like, <laughs> Xiamen <laughs> and like all the buildings. And if people were walking, Chinese you could see. Chinese girls wearing bikini. <laughs> you could, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, red disapp bikini. The disappointingly, side. I didn't get to see any of that, right? But, <laughs> but you could. Yeah, that was how okay. close we were. So, so there's an time. from time to time. Is there any threat or any uh, shooting or any kind of exchange, military exchange? Not when I was there, but I will say that being on the island, you do see signs of a mix between Taiwanese culture and Chinese oh, culture. Oh, really? So, in what sense? For example, the easiest example I can give you is we went to this sausage stand and they had mm -hmm. pricing in both new Taiwanese dollars and renminbi. Oh really? You can pay in both? Yeah. Obviously, Why it happens in, in Taiwan's territory. Obviously at the time when I was there, you know, it was after COVID, mm -hmm. um, there were no more Chinese tourists. Oh, okay. So that was they, they like crossed it off their <laughs> menu list. But it, Why you let the Chinese tourists come to a place that they can conquer so easily? And it's not been conquered, which is, yeah. If you let amazing. too many tourists come, they take the island. They take <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, and you know that Chinese tourists are aggressive. <laughs> right. 
and they just colonize everything like, like a plague, right? <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> so how was how was your experience there? You felt lucky that you you, you draw. You, I felt lucky. Like in, in place. I think I felt lucky in the sense that I don't think I would ever have gone to a place like that if it weren't for the military. That's true. And it Chance. is such a military military militaristic place mm -hmm. that uh, being there in the military is I think one of the oddly enough one of the best ways to experience it because the people the my from all my seniors together, together right yeah a lot of the people the, the people who work in the military there they are from Tingmen so they okay. do feel a sense of connection with the land and they do you can you can feel that they do want to protect that part really? of the island and because they are so close, right? What like are they the feeling urgency. toward the Chinese? Probably because they're beside, they think like, okay, let's end up this shit. I'm sure there conflict. are, yeah, I'm sure there are people who are over the top, are, are yeah, are, are like just over the top and like super like protective about it. But mm -hmm. there are people who, you know, they've lived through like the, the worst wars that have happened on the right. island or the islands, you know, there are more, mm -hmm. more than one island in Jing, Jingmen. So, um, there are people who sort of seen the worst of it, and now it's pretty peace compared to the past. Right, right. So it depends on if you've lived through the war period. I see. Um, but bad times may be coming soon, right? I don't want to be pessimistic, but this is one of the subjects we wanted to start um, treating today, yeah. discussing today, because uh, yeah, of course, nobody wants a. Uh, a military conflict, not even in China. No, but not. judging from Xi Jinping's uh, speeches mm -hmm. over and over, he's obsessed. Yes, it's kind and of getting uh, del delusional. He's becoming Mao in his mind. So right? when I so this this is something that I feel so uh, deeply connected to because I grew up, you know, for the eight, first eighteen years of my life, I didn't have to worry about right. stuff like this. You know, it wasn't it didn't cross my mind that one day, you know, China right. will be a, such a major threat as mm -hmm. it is today.